So hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Justine Robinson. I'm the Academic Programs Manager here at the Boys and Girls Club of Harlem. And to my left is- Madison. And to my right is- Grace. Grace and Madison are two of our club members here at the Boys and Girls Club of Harlem. And Dr. Suarez, can you introduce yourself and your little friend for us, please? Yes, hi, um, I'm Dr. Roxanne Suarez. And this right here is Louis Bear. He came in today um, <laughs> for some breathing issues, but he's doing well. So he's doing really good. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. But for those of you who are joining us, at the Boys and Girls Club of Harlem. This week is STEM Careers Week, and we are educating our club members about the different STEM careers that they are so that our club members can get a chance to apply the knowledge that they're actually learning in STEM during our after school programs through real, real world application and hands on experience. And this week and this month actually is actually really special because we get to highlight some of our awesome volunteers and organizations that we work with, including the Banfield pet hospital. So I just wanted to take this time to thank all volunteers, but a, a special, a special thank you to you, Dr. Tor um, Suarez, and to the Banfield Pet Hospital. So thank you for being with us today. Um, thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. My hope, and I'm sure Dr. Suarez's hope, is that, you know, while watching this video and re-watching, you will be filled with encouragement and positivity and inspiration to hopefully, you know, uh, pursue STEM careers in especially veterinarian careers. So we thought it would be cool to give you a taste of some of what the girls are experiencing at their site. So we're gonna chat it up with Dr. Suarez um, and just learn a little bit more about you, learn a little bit more about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and why you became a veterinarian. How does that sound? Sounds awesome. Ooh, okay, Sounds so Dr. Suarez, tell us about yourself. Where are you from and why did you become a veterinarian? I am uh, Roxanne Suarez. I am born and raised in Bronx, New York. Um, yeah, lived in New York forever. Um, and I'm a Banfield veterinarian. I've been with Banfield for 11 years now. I went to Ross University School of Veterinary Medicine uh, for my uh, veterinary studies. And one of the big, biggest reasons why I became a veterinarian um, was not only because I love, you know, animals and I care about their well-being, but also, um, you know, caring for their owners as well. Um, and I love the sciences as well. You know, I uh, used to always love science and I put the two together to, you know, foster my passion in the field. Wow, thank you for sharing that. 11 years, ladies, is that older than you are? Yeah, <laughs> such well, a, only one year older. Only one year older, wow, that's such a long time. Um, Ma Madison, do you have a question for Dr. Suarez? Yes, what kind of animals have you treated? I have a bearded dragon, have you ever treated one of those? Uh, yeah, so I mainly treat cats and dogs, um, but I also treat exotic animals as well. So I do some what we call pocket pets. So pocket pets would be um, like guinea pigs, uh, gerbils. Um, I do some um, reptiles as well. Um, I think probably the most exotic pet I worked on was a tiger um, at the zoo in uh, Louisiana. I did uh, my clinical year at LSU, Louisiana State University. And on my exotic rotation, uh, we went to the zoo and they were doing a neuter. Uh, so a neuter is when you uh, castrate a male uh, so they don't have any babies. Um, so I, I assisted in castrating um, a tiger. Wow. So that was pretty cool. Wow. Um, what, do you, what, what would you recommend that students like Grace and Madison do now if they want to be veterinarians when they grow up? Um, I would say the biggest thing now, um, you know, is to foster, foster your, your, your curiosity. Um, if you can, you know, volunteer um, with any of the local shelters, you know, reach out to your mentors, you know, in your school so you can, you know, participate in events like this, talk to other veterinarians um, and maybe some older, um, you know, of your classmates that have done anything in the field. Um, also school and, you know, doing well in school all your classes, not just math and science. And it's okay, I always like to say, it's okay if maybe one of those classes you don't particularly are fond of. Um, I was never really fond of chemistry, um, but you know, I had to take chemistry and I did, you know, well. Um, and you know, you, you, you will use all of those studies in your future. 
So do well in school, um, volunteer, volunteer, small animals, large animals, and uh, talk to your guidance counselors so they can present opportunities for you. You hear that, lady? Okay. Grace, do you have any questions for Dr. Suarez? Yes. What is your favorite part of your job and what is your least favorite part of your job? Hmm. I think the my favorite part of the job um there's so many gosh um i'm a chief of staff so what that means is i'm like a lead doctor in the hospital and i mentor so i mentor and coach um a lot of the doctors all my doctors here um and, and not only my doctors my licensed veterinary technicians and associates so i love to teach um so not only do i love you know treating you know furry my furry friends i love being able to teach my doctors so they can do the best quality care for these these furry ones nice. um my least favorite hmm or my i think it was the question was like the grossest part of the job uh would probably be doing anal gland expressions mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> what would you say is the most common condition that comes that you treat or see Hmm. Most common, I would say, maybe the top three would be dental, dental disease. So that's when pets have really bad uh, dental tartar on their teeth. Um, it's very common. Um, and what we do for that is we, we clean their teeth. We have to professionally scale and polish the teeth uh, because tartar can cause like heart disease and things like that. Um, probably also obesity. So keeping our pets, you know, a healthy weight, feeding them appropriately. And I think probably my third would be probably skin, skin allergies, very common. I never thought pets or, dog, you know, dogs to have skin allergies. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting. Thank you for the stethoscope. My doctor always uses this chicken and heart. And I have a question. Do you use the same thing for your pets? Oh, for the stethoscope? Yes, I do. So I have one around my neck right now. Um, and I use this to listen to the heart and the lungs of, of all the furry critters that I treat. So I can listen to see if their heart is beating appropriately, um, if their lungs are nice and clear, because sometimes pets can have heart conditions, the same thing as humans. So like they can have heart murmurs. So that's an abnormal heart sound. Um, or sometimes they can have, you know, heart disease, the same thing as humans. So they can have those issues and, you know, we can manage them with medication, just like humans. Because the girls have stuffed animals in their hands, not real animals, but, and you have some animals. I was wondering if you could walk us through how your, your routine checkup and what you, and show us some things that you would do and kind of what you would look for. And maybe the girls can model that, I don't know, and go along with you. Oh, sure. Okay. So. I always like to go from head to toe with these guys. Um, so I usually start off with, you know, the face. I look at their eyes and their nose and their mouth. I want to make sure that their pupils, which is the black parts of the eye, are uh, symmetrical, meaning like they look the same. Um, looking at the nose, make sure they don't have a runny nose, that that looks clear. I look in their mouth to see if they have any dental tartar, you know, looking at their their uh, tongue and their gums. So I make sure all of that is normal. And then I also feel their trachea over here, which is like the windpipe where you breathe. Mm -hmm. So I rub up against there to make sure I don't feel any swelling. I check their lymph node because you have uh, pets have lymph nodes on either side here, just like we do in humans over here. So I want to feel those to make sure those are normal size and shape. Um, then I look inside of their ears and you want to look in there and make sure, you know, that they don't have any excess uh, ear wax or dirt in there because they can always get, they get ear infections just like we do. Um, and then from there, then I usually go down and feel like their limbs, you know, make sure that those are doing well. Then I would remove mine stethoscope and listen to their heart and their lungs and when you do this you always want to listen to both parts or both sides but I would listen to their right side of their heart and listen for a murmur or abnormal sound so both sides of the chest right and left and all corners so this would be underneath and lateral part and make sure that their breathing and their heart rate is good and then I go down to their belly. So he wants to stamp. <laughs> I would feel their abdomen, so their stomach area. 
to make sure that that feels okay. There's no, I don't feel any lumps or bumps or masses. They're not painful when I'm feeling their tummy. Um, then it, usually at this point, I'm looking at their skin too, like on their back to make sure there's no, um, any external parasites like fleas or ticks or anything like that. If they have any um, skin infections or dry skin. So this is when I would be looking for that and looking for any bumps or lumps. Then I go to the back leg. So the back leg, I'm looking to feel on their hips, either side of their hips <clears throat> to see if uh, they have any pain there. Cause sometimes that can mean that they have hip dysplasia. I feel their, their knees as well um, to see if anything's uh, wrong with their kneecaps or there's any pain um, in that area. Rotate the, the limbs up and down again to see if he, they have a normal range of motion, any pain. I look at their nails as well and their toes to make sure nails are okay and their toes are okay. There's nothing going on in there. And I also look at their bum area, <laughs> make sure that everything over there is working appropriately and looks okay. Um, so that is a basic exam, but then I would also get like a temperature for them as well. Um, so to make sure that they have a normal temperature and make sure they don't have a fever of any sort. And that is a basic physical exam. Then I may extend the exam to something more extensive if, if they came in, um, you know, for example, lameness. So if one of the legs was hurting, I would, ha I would walk, see how they walk, you know, because unfortunately they can't come in and say, hey, Dr. Suarez, you know, my leg hurts. I jumped off the bed and, you know, I hurt it. I have to figure that out for myself. Yeah. So I have to see how they walk. Nice. Thank you for that demonstration. Madison, did you want to ask something else? Oh, yeah. So like if you're helping them and they start moving around a lot, what do you do? So usually I have someone here to assist me. So as a veterinarian, um, I could not do what I do every day without having um, help. So a veterinary assistant or a licensed veterinary technician. And they would um, hold you know, the pet appropriately for me where you know, if they try to move, they, they can't move, but also they're not gonna hurt themselves or you know, hurt the doctor or the assistant. And there's different techniques on you know, how to hold a pet depending for, for different types of exams, you know? So we may hold like this, where we're holding the head area away and then the other arm is like around the body, you know, so they're against your body and they can't move where the doctor can listen to the heart and the lungs and touch different parts of the body where the pet, um, you know, can't go and run away or, or get scared and try to bite us. Yeah, what were you just saying, Madison? It's like you're hugging the dog. Yep, yep, it, it is basically like a big hug, you know, we, we try to make sure that they feel comfortable as best as possible, because it can be scary going to the doctor, right, even when you know you're going to the doctor, you know what's going to happen, you know what's, you know, unfortunately, we can't tell them, you know, that I'm here to, to do what's, what's best for them, they get scared, so we try to make the experience as, as best as possible, so they're not scared, and they feel loved. Cool guys have any pets of your own? No. Yeah. I have, um, let's see, so I have four cats. They don't Ooh. live with me, but they are still mine. Um, so I have Kurapika, Go, Leorio, and Kila. Um, they're my favorite cats. I have my only cats. I don't have any other ones. And I have a bearded dragon too, named Ling. He's really weird. <laughs> awesome. I, I, used to I don't have any pets. I, I want a dog, but I don't have any pets. Well, that's a, a, a well, for Grace, what would you recommend to, to young young people if they are looking to get them? Um, do you have any recommendations? Uh, I would oh. definitely get, oh. get a chihuahua because they're really cute and white. Right? So get a friend chihuahua. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I think a lot of pets are, you know, um, a good start for, for any um, young young person. Of course, it requires a lot of responsibility, you know, so you have to make sure your mom and your dad are, you know, on board with helping you uh, 
take charge of that responsibility. But if you're not gonna do a cat or a dog, some of like the small pocket pets are pretty cool, like guinea pigs. Guinea pigs are, you know, very friendly, but they do need a lot of space. Um, you know, they like to be pet. Um, like you said, cats are really good as well. You have your lizards. I mean, I like them all, so it's so hard for me to choose. Yeah, cool. I remember when I was younger, I actually, well, my mom had a hamster, uh, but that's as far as I got, have gotten as pocket pets. I've had several dogs, though, but yeah. Well, if you ladies don't have any more questions, are you sure you can come to mind? Okay. So thank you all for, for watching us today. We hope that you enjoyed this video and the special, special to you, Dr. Suarez, and to the Banfield Cut Hospital. Ladies, we say thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And don't forget to check the description of our social media platforms. And also ring the bell for no more notifications. Yes, just like the lady said, and make sure that you follow both organizations, the Vanderbilt Pet Hospital and the Boys and Girls Club of Harlem. Thank you so much. And I hope he gets better, Dr. Suarez. Yes, Take he's doing care. Great. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye. Bye.